Hi everyone, how's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. As usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. Former presidential advisor Bertram Gross once said, As I look at America today, I am not afraid to say that I am afraid. The American governmental scheme is sliding ever closer towards a pervasive authoritarianism. The American people, the permanent underclass in America, have allowed themselves to be so distracted and divided that they have failed to notice the building blocks of tyranny being laid down right under their noses by the architects of the deep state. This steady slide towards tyranny, meted out by militarized local and federal police and legalistic bureaucrats, has been carried forward by each successive president over the past 50 years regardless of their political affiliation. Biden, Trump, Obama, Bush, Clinton, they have all been complicit in carrying out the deep state's agenda. Frankly, it really doesn't matter who occupies the White House, because it is a profit-driven unelected bureaucracy. Call it whatever you will, the deep state, the controllers, the masterminds, the shadow government, the corporate elite, the police state, the surveillance state, the military-industrial complex, that is actually calling the shots. In the interest of liberty and truth, here's an A to Z primer that spells out the grim realities of life in the American police state that no one seems to be talking about anymore. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you've learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so you won't miss any updates. Finally, Watch until the end to avoid any misunderstandings. A is for the American police state. A police state is characterized by bureaucracy, secrecy, perpetual wars, a nation of suspects, militarization, surveillance, widespread police presence, and a citizenry with little recourse against police actions. B is for our battered bill of rights. In the militarized police culture that is America today, where you can be kicked, punched, tasered, shot, intimidated, harassed, stripped, searched, brutalized, terrorized, wrongfully arrested, and even killed by a police officer, and that officer is rarely held accountable for violating your rights, the Bill of Rights doesn't amount to much. C is for civil asset forfeiture. This governmental scheme to deprive Americans of their liberties, namely, the right to property, is being carried out under the guise of civil asset forfeiture, a government practice wherein government agents, usually the police and now TSA agents, seize private property they suspect may be connected to criminal activity. Then, whether or not any crime is actually proven to have taken place, the government keeps the citizen's property, and it's virtually impossible to get it back. D is for drones. Nearly 1,500 police departments across the U.S. include drones as part of their technological arsenal, and that number is growing. Although drones may be used for benevolent purposes, they have increasingly become extensions of the surveillance state, carrying out warrantless and constant mass aerial surveillance in violation of the Fourth Amendment. E is for emergency state. We have been the subjected to an emergency state that justifies all manner of government tyranny and power grabs in the so-called name of national security. F is for fascism. A study conducted by Princeton and Northwestern University concluded that the U.S. government does not represent the majority of American citizens. Instead, the study found that the government is ruled by the rich and powerful, or the so-called economic elite. Moreover, the researchers concluded that policies enacted by this governmental elite nearly always favor special interests and lobbying groups. G is for global police. The federal government has distributed more than $18 billion worth of battlefield-appropriate military weapons, vehicles and equipment, such as drones, tanks, and grenade launchers, to domestic police departments across the country. H is for hollow-point bullets. 
the government's efforts to militarize and weaponize its agencies and employees is reaching epic proportions, with federal agencies as varied as the Department of Homeland Security and the Social Security Administration stockpiling millions of lethal hollow-point bullets, which violate international law. I is for the Internet of Things, in which Internet-connected things monitor your home, your health, and your habits in order to keep your pantry stocked, your utilities regulated, and your life under control and relatively worry-free. The key word here, however, is control. J is for jailing for profit. Having outsourced their inmate population to private prisons run by private corporations, this profit-driven form of mass punishment has given rise to a $70 billion private prison industry that relies on the complicity of state governments to keep their privately run prisons full by jailing large numbers of Americans for petty crimes. K is for Kentucky v. King. In an 8-to-1 ruling, the Supreme Court ruled that police officers can break into homes without a warrant, even if it's the wrong home, as long as they think they may have a reason to do so. L is for license plate readers, which enable law enforcement and private agencies to track the whereabouts of vehicles and their occupants all across the country. This data collected on tens of thousands of innocent people is also being shared between police agencies, as well as with government fusion centers and private companies. This puts Big Brother in the driver's seat. M is for Main Corps. Since the 1980s, the U.S. government has acquired and maintained, without warrant or court order, a database of names and information on Americans considered to be threats to the nation. As Salon reports, this database, reportedly dubbed Main Corps, is to be used by the Army and FEMA in times of national emergency or under martial law to locate and round up Americans seen as threats to national security. N is for no-knock raids. Owing to the militarization of the nation's police forces, SWAT teams are now increasingly being deployed for routine police matters. In fact, more than 80,000 of these paramilitary raids are carried out every year. O is for overcriminalization and overregulation. Thanks to an overabundance of 4,500 plus federal crimes and 400,000 plus rules and regulations, it's estimated that the average American actually commits three felonies a day without knowing it. P is for pathocracy and pre-crime. When our own government treats us as things to be manipulated, maneuvered, mined for data, manhandled by police and other government agents, mistreated, and then jailed in profit-driven private prisons if we dare step out of line, we are no longer operating under a constitutional republic. Instead, what we are experiencing is a pathocracy tyranny at the hands of a psychopathic government, which operates against the interests of its own people except for favoring certain groups. Q is for qualified immunity. Qualified immunity allows police officers to walk away without paying a dime for their wrongdoing. Conveniently, those deciding whether a cop should be immune from having to personally pay for misbehavior on the job all belong to the same system, all cronies with a vested interest in protecting the police and their infamous code of silence city and county attorneys, police commissioners, city councils and judges. R is for roadside strip searches and blood draws. The courts have increasingly erred on the side of giving government officials, especially the police, vast discretion in carrying out strip searches, blood draws and even probes for a broad range of violations, no matter how minor the offense. S is for the surveillance state. On any given day, the average American going about his daily business will be monitored, surveilled, spied on and tracked in more than 20 different ways by both government and corporate eyes and ears. T is for tasers. Non-lethal weapons such as tasers, stun guns, rubber pellets and the like have been used by police as weapons of compliance more often and with less restraint, even against women and children, and in some instances, even causing death. U is for unarmed citizens shot by police. No longer is it unusual to hear about incidents in which police shoot unarmed individuals first and ask questions later, often attributed to a fear for their safety. V is for Operation Vigilant Eagle, one of several government initiatives dating back to 2009 that call for heightened scrutiny of those who challenge the government's authority. This particular program calls for surveillance of military veterans, 
characterizing them as extremists and potential domestic terrorist threats, because they may be disgruntled, disillusioned or suffering from the psychological effects of war. Coupled with a report that defines extremists as individuals and groups that are mainly anti-government, rejecting federal authority in favor of state or local authority, or rejecting government authority entirely, these tactics bode ill for anyone seen as opposing the government. W is for whole body scanners. Using either X-ray radiation or radio waves, scanning devices and government mobile units are being used not only to see through your clothes, but to spy on you within the privacy of your home. X is for XKeyScore, one of the many spying programs carried out by the National Security Agency that targets every person in the United States who uses a computer or phone. This top-secret program allows analysts to search with no prior authorization through vast databases, containing emails, online chats, and the browsing histories of millions of individuals. Y is for UNES. Using your face, mannerisms, social media and UNES against you, you are now be tracked based on what you buy, where you go, what you do in public, and how you do what you do. Z is for zero tolerance. We have moved into a new paradigm in which young people are increasingly viewed as suspects and treated as criminals by school officials and law enforcement alike, often for engaging in little more than childish behavior or for saying the wrong word. In some jurisdictions, students have also been penalized under school zero-tolerance policies for such inane crimes as carrying cough drops, wearing black lipstick, bringing nail clippers to school, using Listerine or scope, and carrying fold-out combs that resemble switchblades. The lesson being taught to our youngest and most impressionable citizens is this. In the American police state, you're either a prisoner, shackled, controlled, monitored, ordered about, limited in what you can do and say, your life not your own, or a prison bureaucrat, politician, police officer, judge, jailer, spy, profiteer, etc. None of these dangers have dissipated in any way, and yet suddenly, no one seems to be talking about any of the egregious governmental abuses that are still wreaking havoc on our freedoms. This is how freedom dies. If there is any means left to us for thwarting the government in its relentless march towards outright dictatorship, it may rest with the Tenth Amendment, which affirms that we the people, in the form of juries and local governments, have the power to invalidate governmental laws, tactics and policies that are illegitimate, egregious or blatantly unconstitutional. Nullify everything. Nullify everything the government does that flies in the face of the Constitution. It's time to reign in our runaway government, reclaim our freedoms, and restore justice in America. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.